Hey Ramblers, this video covers chapter 4.3 in our textbook and deals with optimization and modeling. Now we're going to apply the same principles of optimization that we've learned in the past, in the past two sections, but now we're not going to be given the function. So we're going to have to model a function, and these are basically interpretations of real-world events. So we'll be looking for the maximum amount of area that can be enclosed by a, a certain amount of fencing, or what's the largest volume that a can can hold given the a minimum amount of material. These kind of um, applications are obvious in the real world, where, especially in business, where you're always trying to maximize revenue or profits and trying to minimize costs. So we'll go through some steps, and I really want you to pay attention to the steps that we go through. The first step will always be to find the optimization equation. Or I'm sorry, the optimization function. It's, it's whatever it is you want the most or the least of. And then, because we're dealing with the real world, there will always be something called the constraint equation. We will then solve the constraint equation for one variable and substitute it into the optimization function. From there, it's usually pretty easy for students because we've already learned about how to maximize and find critical points. So you find the derivative, solve for the critical points, and then you test them to make sure that they are in fact critical points. So it's a pretty easy process once we've modeled the function, and so that's going to take a lot of practice. So we're going to work through three examples in this video, and uh, please take careful notes, and I hope that this helps and that you can apply it to the problems in the exercises. Thanks for watching. The first example we want to look at deals with area, because maybe that's just the easiest to um, imagine. So it says here the highway department is planning to build a rectangular picnic area for motorists along a major highway to have an area of 5,000 square yards. So that's going to be our constraint. It has to have at least 5,000 square yards. And it has to be fenced off on three sides that are not next to the highway. What is the least amount of fencing? So we're trying to minimize the amount of fencing. Well, you would think that the easiest way is just have a really, really small uh, picnic area. But again, it, the constraint is that it has to be 5,000 yards. So let's set up our two, our optimization function and our optimization, I'm sorry, our constraint equation. Well, the first thing I like to do is to draw a picture. And so we know that we're going to have a rectangular area and it's going to be next to the highway. We don't have to put up a fence along this area next, or this uh, region next to the highway. So we're just going to have kind of a X and a Y. So I'm going to call the vertical Y, as I usually do, and X will be my horizontal um, component of this fence. And I know that the area has to equal 5,000. Okay, so my optimization, in which case, in this case, I'm going to be minimizing, but that's going to be, I want to have the least amount of fencing so let's call it f of x, y equals x plus 2y. And my constraint will be that the area has to equal 5,000. Well, you know the area of a rectangle is going to equal x times y. So 5,000 equals x times y. And students in the past have found that the constraint is usually the equation that deals with the number. So that's step one from the introduction. I told you to find an optimization and a constraint, an optimization function and a constraint equation. Now we're going to take, you're going to use the constraint equation and we will substitute in to the optimization function. It really doesn't matter whether you solve for x or for y. I'm going to, just to keep things in terms of x, I'm going to solve for y. I do that by just dividing both sides by x. And so now I see that y equals 5,000 over x. So my new optimization function is going to be just f of x equals x plus 2 times what had been y, which is 5,000 over x. Now, I can simplify that a little more to get x plus 10,000 over x. Now, in order to find the optimal values, I need to take the derivative and solve for the critical points. So let's do that. So you may want to rewrite this equation 
with negative exponents just to make the using the power rule easier. So that's x plus 10,000 times x to the negative 1. Well, taking the derivative of that is pretty simple. I'm just going to use the power rule. And I'm left with 1 plus, oops, I'm sorry, it's going to be 1 minus 10,000 x to the negative 2. Okay, so since I'm looking for critical points, I'm going to set that equal to 0. And I'm going to rewrite it so with that negative exponent in the denominator. Because that's just easier for me to, rec to, to work with algebraically. So, it's very clear that this will equal 0. Well, we can set it equal to 0 and solve. But this will not be, um, this will not exist when x equals 0. So I know that I'll have a critical point at x equals 0. But let's find out when does this equation equal 0. So to do that, I'm going to bring this whole term to the other side. And you'll notice that in these optimization equations, it's good to have a, uh, something be negative. So I get 10,000 over x squared equals 1. And multiplying both sides by x squared means that 10,000 equals x squared. So x equals the square root of 10,000. And the square root of 10,000 is just 100. So x equals 100. Now, we have to solve back to get y. And so we'll use our constraint equation again. You may recall that 5,000 equaled x plus 2y. So I'm simply going to substitute in for the x that I've solved for. And that's going to equal 100 plus 2y. So y equals 2,450. So those are my two values. I then should test them. So I'm going to put the value I came up with for x. And here's our x, uh, our x um, axis. And we know that x has to be between 0 feet, which wouldn't be any fence at all, and 5,000, which would just be no room for y. So it has to be somewhere in there. And we came up with 100. So if I were to plug 100 back into this original um, derivative, I know that 100 squared is 10,000. So if I have values less than 100, I will be subtracting from a number that is greater than 1. I mean, 100 divided by, uh, I'm sorry, 10,000 divided by 1 squared is definitely going to be 1 minus 10,000. That's negative. So that means my function would be decreasing. And then if I uh, values greater than 100, now my x is going to be, the denominator will be larger. And so I will have a positive value for my derivative, which means I'm increasing. Therefore, I have minimized the amount of fencing. OK, let's take a look at another example. OK, this one's a little bit tougher because we're dealing with volume. And they ask us, what are the dimensions of the lightest right circular cylinder that can hold a volume of 10,000 centimeters? So pause for a minute. What are you thinking is going to be the optimization function, and what is the constraint equation? Well, they've been kind of tricky with the wording here. And it's clear, as I said in the prior um, example, that whatever has the number is usually the constraint. And so they're looking for the volume of a can equaling 1,000 cubic centimeters. So that means 1,000 equals the volume of a cylinder, which you may remember is pi r squared times the height of the cylinder. OK, the optimization function, they've talked about it being the lightest open top right circular cylinder. Well, that just means that we're going to use the least amount of of material. So the surface area is going, we're going to minimize the surface area. So the surface area of a cylinder is without a top is going to be the base, which is pi r squared, plus the sides, which is 2 pi r times h. Now that's going to be, let's say that's material, m equals that. All right, so now we have a variable, I'm sorry, we have a function an optimization function in two variables, r and h. And I need to solve for one of them. 
So the easiest one to solve for is h. So that means that my constraint equation when solved for h will be 1,000 over pi r squared. Now let's substitute that into the optimization function. So we now have a new function, m of r, which equals pi r squared plus 2 pi r, and then here's my substituted value for h, 1,000 over pi r squared. Okay, now let's, uh, let's simplify that and get it ready for optimization. When I do that, one of the pi's in the numerator and the pi in the denominator are going to cancel. Same with one of the r's. So I'm left with 2,000 over r, or 2,000 r to the negative 1. Okay, now we're ready to take the derivative, which of course will be m prime of r equals 2 pi r minus 2,000 r to the negative 2. Now, in order to find where that equals uh, 0, I set the derivative equal to 0 and simply solve for r. Now that gives me 2,000 r to the negative 2 equals 2 pi r. And I just don't like working with negative exponents. So I'm going to have to rewrite that as 2,000 over r squared equals 2 pi r. Now to solve this, I'll multiply both sides by r squared and divide both sides by 2. So 1,000 equals pi r cubed. So r cubed equals 1,000 over pi. I'm going to use a calculator to make that into something that's a little easier for me to deal with. And I get that r equals 6.83. And so now I'm going to use that to solve for the height of the can. So 1,000 equals pi times my new value for the radius of 6.83 squared times h. Solving for h, I see that that equals 1,000 over 6.83 squared times pi, which is a decimal equivalent of 6.82. All right, well... Fairly interesting. The radius and the height are about the same. Okay, um, let's take a look at one more example that's a little bit different. It involves some graphing and a situation that might not be something that comes up in every day. Okay, the last example really benefits from a picture. So let's, uh, let's draw what's going on here. It tells us that a rectangle has its base on the x-axis and its upper two vertices on this parabola y equals 12 minus x squared. Well, 12 minus x squared is going to be a parabola that's facing downward, whose axis of symmetry is the y-axis. And the base will stretch from one x-coordinate to the other. And there's our rectangle. So this is kind of a different um, example because our constraint is actually given to us. And what we're trying to maximize is the largest area that the rectangle can have. So that means our optimization function was just going to be um, the area of a rectangle. Now be careful, because while the height is clearly going to be y, the base, you might be inclined to say, is x. But since we're on the coordinate plane, each half of the rectangle's base is an x. So the total distance is 2x. So my area, in terms of x and y, is going to equal base, which is 2x, times y. And then my constraint, the thing that is relating x and y, is going to be the equation y equals 12 minus x squared. So just as I have in the past, I'm going to substitute 12 minus x squared into my optimization function, giving me a new function in one variable of 2x times the quantity 12 minus x squared. Well, I'm sure you can tell already, the variable, is, I'm sorry, the algebra is going to be much easier. But let's simplify it first before taking the derivative. So we get 24x minus 2x cubed. And so when we take the derivative, we get 24 minus 6x. 
squared. Okay, so we set that equal to 0, and let's solve for x. So 6x squared equals 24, that means x squared equals 4, so x equals positive or negative 2. So if x equals 2, then we plug in for y, y equals 12 minus 2 squared, so y is going to equal 8. Okay, so those are my two values. I should test them using a sign pattern to ensure that they are, um, in fact, a maximum. And so to do that real quickly, let's just put x on there. I know that uh, when I plug my x equals 2 and I take values, I can't have an x smaller than 0, so that's a lower bound. Let's plug uh, 1 in. And I plug it in again to my derivative. And when I do, I have 24 minus 6. Well, that's clearly positive, so I'm increasing. When I plug numbers above 2, like 3, I get 24 minus 6 times 9, which is clearly negative. And so sure enough, at 2, I have a maximum. And so since I was looking for the maximum area, I have found my maximum. Okay, Ramblers, uh, thanks for watching. Hope you took good notes, and I hope this helped.